Intro item number 367. Fail thou my life, O Lord my God. M367. Is that on? Sunday after Pentecost within the octave of the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, and in fellowship with one another, enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament amen the colic for purity almighty god to you, to you all hearts are open, open all desires are known and from you no secrets are hid cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your holy spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord of mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. There are two colleagues for today. One for the eleventh Sunday after Pentecost, proper fifteen, found on page one seven seven, followed by the one for Saint Mary um, Saint Mary the Virgin, page one hundred and eighty seven. Page one eight seven. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin, an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily 
in the blessed steps of his most holy life. To Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taken to yourself the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your incarnate Son. Grant that we, who have been redeemed by his blood, may share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 10 through 11. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34, verses 1 to 9, found on pages 508 and 509. Psalm 34, verses 1 to 9. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he answered me. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I call in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Patience and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and shall be forever. is taken from Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 through 7 but when the fullness of time was come God sent for his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because ye are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying Abba Father wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of God through Christ, the word of the Lord. Gradual M, number seven to voice seven, shall we not love thee? M seven four seven.
Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to Christ Savior. The Gospel is written in St. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning to read from the 46th verse. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty, the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, our Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, whose Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. My soul magnifies the Lord. Today I'm using the theme, the Christ bearer becomes the world sharer. The Christ bearer becomes the world sharer for our salvation. Mary has been known by many titles. The Blessed Virgin, Mother, the Mother of our Lord, Mary, the God-bearer, Mary, the Christ-bearer. Mary had many titles, and all these titles reflect her significance, the significance to Christians and the various perception about the impact that her life made and is still making on the faith of the church. So today, let us reflect upon her and her attributes to the church of which we are all a part. There are facts about her that are not recorded in the Bible or the scripture, but the oral tradition or some other writings reveal things about her and of course many questions are asked and debated about her life and witness in the plan of salvation. Her background then is not recorded in scripture but information indicates that her mother's name was Anna and her father Jehoiakim. Very little is given about before she met the angel Gabriel. The last textual reference to her comes from the story of Pentecost, where she is in the upper room among the 20, 120, waiting to be empowered to do mission and work for the Lord. So what is actually recorded in scripture would be the question. There may be other materials out there, but until God leads someone to it, the only witness we have about Mary is the Gospels, the Acts of the Apostles, 
and the epistles. What did they indicate? One, she was a native of Nazareth. Two, a faithful and obedient Jew. Three, engaged and married to Joseph. Four, she gave birth to a son with God's aid and without Joseph's biological contribution. She was a cousin of Elizabeth who, with God herself, gave birth after many years of being barren. Sixthly, she was present for the and, and participated in most of Jesus' ministry. Seventh, she witnessed his death and received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The Gospel text appointed for this feast day expresses Mary's verbal praise and prophecy. Apart from Mary's cousin Elizabeth, this is the only surviving text in St. Luke's Gospel where a woman, first of all, declares God's mercy and secondly, announces God's justice in Jesus Christ. So, she offers high praise. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, and verse 46. As children in Sunday school, we had to recite this along with the colic for today. It is a part of our morning and evening prayer and a form of forms a pattern for our rule of life as priests and people. It has helped many to not only commit to memory, but become conscious that God deserves praise and honor all our days. Every, every praise, sing every praise, be every praise to God who stirred up in Mary's womb something holy showing mercy on those who fear him he is God in every generation so the words are timeless the words are limited less for all seasons through all ages St. Luke's Gospel chapter 11 reminds us of that the mercy then the mercy Mary proclaims is also God's justice. God, God, she says, has cast down the mighty from their seats or thrones and lifted up the lowly. She was regarded as insignificant and God made her significant. When God enters and becomes a part of our life, we too become precious and significant. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 52, reflect that. Mary bore Jesus in her, the Christ bearer. So, the Mary of Scripture is courageous and prophetic, and better still, call a courageous prophet in word and in deed. She activated what she pronounced she then counts her blessing and names them one by one when she says the almighty has done great things for me it's in luke's gospel chapter 1 and 49 oh that sense of gratitude was her attitude you see god saved mary from death by stoning the punishment prescribed by Jewish law for a woman who pursued sex outside of marriage. She could have died, but God had a plan for her. And no one, no one could frustrate the plan of God, no matter how hard they tried. This God invited and empowered her as a disciple. So courageous and blessed is Mary. She was known in legend and tradition to be a virgin when Jesus was born and was also thought to have remained a virgin through her marriage to Joseph 
until her death. Her perpetual virginity had been claimed in spite of the scripture's testimony to the existence of the other children. For all Jewish mothers and fathers, virginity was a quality admired and required of unmarried females. You see, married Jews engage in a loving sexual activity not simply for procreation or having children, but to facilitate their relationship with God. Another interesting claim on which this feast day is observed is that Mary did not die, but ascended in bodily form into heaven. This feast day is called the Assumption. It is assumed that she went straight to heaven. Remember that story of Elijah and Elisha? When Elijah, Elijah worked as a prophet, he came to an end, his work came to an end. A chariot and horses of fire appeared and Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. There's also a story of Moses. They're not too sure. There are two stories in Deuteronomy, so it's not quite certain how in the world that happened. But he was carried on on a mountain and it was said that they can't even find where he was buried. But regardless of what we may think or say or assume, Mary is worthy of honor. Her role in the plan of salvation alters our salvation and our situation. She is held, and rightly so, as the moral mother and wife. Scripture demonstrates that Mary is the model Christian and an exemplified disciple. But let's look at the parent part of Mary and Joseph. Mary let the angel convince her to conceive a child out of wedlock. A sense of obedience. Joseph kept his commitment to marry her. Couldn't be a behavior. Mary and Joseph fed, housed, educated, protected Jesus. As all parents are required to do. Like all good parents and grandparents, they released Jesus so that he could live his own life and follow his own calling. They tried to support and observe without interfering. Sadly, Mary, like far too many people, witnessed the untimely death of a loved one. We, though, are called today to claim God's presence, to guard and guide us, and affirm God's similar intervention in the lives of men and women, boys and girls everywhere. Our faith in God, and the faith that we should have, is that which is demonstrated by Mary. Mary may seem as if she was greater than life itself. But she was mortal too, like us. She was obedient to the will of God when she said yes. She pondered things in her heart when she did not understand. And she followed him all the way all the way with Jesus, we too must simply go. So God challenged her and empowered her, and she counted each as a blessing from God. So Mary, already faithful, already obedient, is called to do more for the Lord. So then, develop a legacy, as Mary did, of courage. The example of a prophet in word and deed. We too 
can experience the same if we would only heed in his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, in response to God's word, we affirm our faith, our hope, and our trust in the one true and living God. In words from the Nicene Creed, found on page 104. Page 104 in our mass books. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Intercession Form E, found on page 112. Let us pray for the fellowship of the Church of Christ and for all God's creatures. With all who confess the name of Jesus as Lord and Savior, we offer our prayers and praises in spirit and in truth. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. With Jesus Christ, our great high priest, whoever lives to intercede for us, we uphold all ministers of God's word and sacraments that they may fulfill their high calling in the faith. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. We pray for the unfailing guidance of the Holy Spirit on those who are called to interpret and expound the will of the Lord to others. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. We pray for all organizations within the fellowship of the body of Christ that their work may edify the people of God and bear faithful witness to the gospel. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. we pray for all persons who do not share our confession of faith, that with courage and truth and love, we may work together with them and promote the common good. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our country and all who make decisions on our behalf, that they may be guided by the Spirit to direct our affairs in righteousness and peace. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. For our judges, magistrates, and all who administer justice, that in all things they may seek to do your will and to protect the rights and freedom of your people. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. In our schools and in all places of learning, may true knowledge, sound wisdom, and godly discipline ever be found. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. To the poor, the hungry, the unemployed, and all victims of persecution and discrimination of any kind, may God in Christ. Help us all to bring relief 
justice, and protection. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. To all who suffer now from pain and disease, from human discomfort and misery, may God and Christ bring healing and joy for the renewal of their faith. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. prayer. That we may use aright the fullness of the earth, that our pursuits in science and the advancement of our skills may ever be in service of that true humanity which is created in the image of God. Father in heaven, hear our prayer. That we may never become the slaves of money or of the lust for power, but may rather strive for victory through the power of love. Father in heaven, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. That with all who belong to the communion of saints, both living and departed, we may ever rejoice in the blessed assurance of that hope which has been won for us in Christ. Father in heaven, receive these prayers in the name, name of your dear Son, Son even, even Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turn now to page 123, uh, Act of Penance. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, Amen. our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. And have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace. And build up the life. The peace of the Lord. Be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, I trust you have a very nice day. We continue to recognize those persons who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. In any kind, whether there's a wedding anniversary or ordination anniversary, we pray for them today. Remembering before God all those persons who are sick and suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying. We pray that before they die, they would make their peace with Almighty God, remembering all who have died, especially those of this parish, upon their soul and upon all Christian souls. May sweet Jesus have mercy. Recession of them, number 752. Virgin born we bow, him 752. The angel of the Lord announced unto Mary, she 
thee by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And Mary said to the angel, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuation of the recession hymn 752, Virgin Born We Bow. with you and also with you let us pray the anima christi soul of christ sanctify me body of christ save me blood of christ refresh me water from the side of christ wash me passion of christ bring me O good jesus hear me within thy womb hide me suffer me not to be separated from thee from the malicious enemy defend me in the hour of my death call me and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee through all eternity. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful for the mercy of God rest in peace. And rise in glory. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Hey Church Fam, welcome back to Notices with Vanya. Yes, I am here to remind you that all Sunday and weekday services and meetings held on church premises are still suspended. This is in keeping with the national orders issued on the 24th of July, 2020. We are invited to join the people of Holy Trinity for their broadcast service which will air this Sunday, 7 a.m. You can find it on Facebook, YouTube and the Diocesan website. Bible study will be held this Wednesday, 7 p.m. on Zoom, where we will continue to walk through 1 Corinthians. A vestry meeting will be held Tuesday, the 18th of August, 2020, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Condolences are extended to Mr. Patrick Wright on the passing of his wife, Beulah Wright.
funeral arrangements will be made on a later day. Jeanette Smith and family has made a donation to the church in memory of Mrs. Winfred Johnson. They thank you for your continued encouragement, support, and prayers. Those members who were impacted by COVID-19 are asked to please contact the church's office via telephone. As you know, the Fun Run Walk has been canceled due to COVID-19. Members who purchase tickets are asked to please contact the captains of their birthday months or you can make a donation to the church. We ask your continued prayers for the family of Trevon Edwards and his safe return. And we ask that you continue to please pray for the sick and shut-in of our church and the wider community. Those were your weekly notices. Have a blessed week. Remember to stay safe, stay sanitized, and always wear a mask. Birthday greetings. On the 12th, Erin Cash. On the 16th, Virginia Curry. On the 17th, Jade Lockhart. On the 20th, Sharon Sweeten. On the 22nd, Yuna Curtis II and Tiana Rahman. Wedding anniversaries. On the 16th, Dwayne and Donna Sanders. On the 20th, Len and Anita King. And on the 21st, Bruce and Olive Pinder.